Don Yemens, head of NASA's Near Earth Object Program, stated that you don't need to ask the government. Just go out and look. It's not there. Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents... Hit the button, baby. Stay cool. But if you are prone to flooding, please be careful about that. Even though there's all kinds of different things going to be happening in the east, it's a lot worse in other parts of the country than it is in the eastern part of the country. So at least uh, keep that in mind as well. Again, notice all this uh, darker energy to hear these uh, uh, red blobs to hear. Flags are flying and there's some very rough surf out there. Uh, the system will be nudged. Again, that is a good word to use, nudged. This area of low pressure are going nowhere fast. Again, I'm calling it a southeastern, okay? Not a nor'eastern, a southeastern. Right now, it looks more like a winter storm than it does anything uh, like a tropical storm. Nonetheless, we continue to watch this area of low pressure churn its way off of the eastern coastline. Uh, Anna, I believe, will be the uh, name. Okay, I finally got that right. Will it become a tropical storm? Nah, maybe not. Subtropical storm Anna continues to meander around off the Carolina coast. Anna, which is very unusual. This is our first named storm of the season, a season that doesn't even officially begin until June 1st. We have subtropical storm Anna. Why is it a subtropical storm? A subtropical storm that is going to cause some gale force winds on the coast, but it's not moving very much, and so it's not going anywhere at the moment. Now, it's moving. It's going to be very sluggish here the next couple of days off to the north and the uh, northwest and uh, it's really not moving uh, hardly at all or hasn't moved uh, much at all over the last uh, six hours nonetheless its impacts are going to be felt along the carolina coast anywhere from hatteras cape hatteras north carolina all the way down toward myrtle beach so here's the area that is going to be impacted the most there's going to be rough surf some beach erosion and strong gusty winds even though there's all kinds of different things going to be happening in the east it's a lot worse in other parts of the country than it is in the eastern part of the country so at least uh, keep that in mind as well but as it does move uh, meandering around and then eventually move northward persistence of it the idea that it's going to stay over the same place producing new showers and thunderstorms over a two-day period that's the main thing that is going to cause some problems, some flooding. Also have some reports of beach erosion in Foley Beach just to the south of Charleston. And also some possible damage from gusty winds gusting over 40 miles per hour. The storm eventually will come up the coast probably in weakened form and maybe cause a bit of rain into the northeast early next week. Now the movement of the storm is going to be to the north. This is the uh, H Wharf track takes it up, kind of wanders it around out here over the Atlantic, and then eventually, a few days, takes it into a Wilmington, almost up to New York City, all right? But again, keep in mind, there's a area of uh, water uh, roughly in this area, but certainly it will continue to produce a decent amount of rain right along the coast. It's going to be windy. It's going to be a lot of heavy rain, you know? Uh, once it comes inland, it's just going to be a rainstorm that's going to head up next week up along the coast. So what's controlling the system? And we've got an upper level ridge to the north of it. Cities impacted Jacksonville, Charleston, and also Wilmington. As you can see, still pretty much there. Notice how it's a little bit closer. The ridge is still there. Myrtle Beach, Charleston, Wilmington, now looking at some squally conditions, some gusty winds, and also some very heavy pockets of rain. And like a bulldozer, kind of drop this upper level bulge here. And the impacts are going to be gusty winds, heavy rains, rough seas, all that kind of stuff. So that's going to be the big impact as we move forward. Again, on the right side, there's always a potential for severe weather in the form of isolated tornadoes, so that will definitely be a problem. Should uh, make a landfall as we head throughout Sunday uh, evening and Sunday night. Again, those uh, impacts going to remain along the coastline for this weekend and into early next week. Uh, the system will be nudged, uh, and again, that is a good word to use, nudged. Well, it's got some tropical characteristics and some characteristics of not a tropical storm or it may be uh, titled a subtropical low that is a system that has both tropical and non-tropical characteristics uh, another issue that we have with the storm right now is we have a lot of dry air wrapping around the system this yellowish looking area that you see coming around through here is drier air and that's basically preventing the real deep tropical moisture down to the southeast of it to really feed into the system so it it really is restricted 
restricted as to how much uh, very moist and stable air is going to wrap into the system. So as a result, there is a problem. The reason why it's a subtropical storm and not a pure tropical storm is because this system has ingredients of both tropical and non-tropical storms. That is, a tropical storm and a storm that we would see in the wintertime. Now, that's the story along the Carolina coast over the uh, next couple of days. You know, if people want to say that raindrops from Anna, hey, all the power to you, okay? All right. Every once in a while during hurricane season, you probably hear a couple of words thrown around that can be a little bit confusing. I think one of those words is probably... doesn't matter what you call this, whether you call it a subtropical storm or a tropical storm, uh, the impacts will be pretty much the same then. Strong winds, very rough surf, and again, uh, very uh, gusty winds along the... Uh, but if you are prone to flooding, please be careful about that. So that's why it is called a subtropical system. You're watching AccuWeather. We are all weather all the time. I am meteorologist Bernie Reno. All right, here's our storm off the Carolina coast.